What's going on YouTube? It's Blunzilla Video back with a theme video for once. This is not a random vlog. We finally got a fucking topic to talk about. And that topic is my top six films that have robberies at variety stores that end in gunfire. I know that's a mouthful, but it's a cool little uh cool little theme I thought about. You know, I was thinking about uh, Taxi Driver, as a matter of fact, which is one of the films on the list and will be the first film we talk about since I just spoiled it. Uh, you know, the, the scene, we'll, we'll get right into it. The first movie is Taxi Driver, okay? So, Taxi Driver, an amazing film, I, I must say, but uh, the store robbery goes like this. Basically, Travis Bickle, played by Robert De Niro, he goes into a variety store. He's obviously chummy with the guy that, that runs the shop. It's like a bodega. Uh, that's what they call them in, the in uh, New York, right? Like a little greasy fucking bodega store. It sounds greasy, but whatever. He goes in there. He buys. He's, he's getting his milk and all that shit. And this asshole comes in with a gun and he's trying to rob the place. And he's getting. He's being pretty successful with the robbery. Little does he know, Travis Bickle is behind him with a newly purchased revolver. Did he have the revolver or did he have an automatic? I'm not sure. But basically, he plugs this fucking prick and then. He leaves leaves the gun with the, the store owner, and the store owner proceeds to beat the shit out of this asshole with a golf club. It's brutal, but it's it's such a hardcore scene, and like it's a scene within the movie that plays like a short film almost. It's it's very uh, controversial. I would like it by today's standards. It's like a couple of white guys beating the shit out of a black guy that's robbing a store. I mean, if you made that now, people would probably be fucking outraged. But uh, for the time, it. It worked, and it's still effective scene to me. I think it's great. So, the first film, Taxi Driver. So, the second film we're going to talk about is a film by Forrest Whitaker, which is called Strapped, which is an amazing fucking hood film. Beautifully acted by Bokeem Woodbine, Fredro Starr, uh, Michael Bean. It's got uh, the dude from Ride of, or Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 that was like the doctor, the male doctor, and they all kick ass. It's about gun dealing. It's about selling guns in the streets of New York and it's amazing but there's a very pivotal moment there's actually two variety store scenes in this film there's a scene where uh, our hero goes to buy a gun from a variety store basically to set him up to turn him in because he's trying to get his girlfriend out of prison but that's not the scene with the robbery the scene with the robbery goes like this Bokeem Woodbine who is Daquan and Bamboo Fredro Star they walk into a bodega I guess bodega is the word of the fucking day and there's a dude in there getting a sandwich made there's an Asian guy working the store, and he's making the sandwiches, right? So, Bamboo decides that sandwich looks fucking mighty delicious on a hot, sunny day. And he says, I want the same sandwich. So, the Asian dude behind the, behind the counter he starts making a sandwich. Bokeem Woodbine's smoking a cigarette, and he gets sent out of the store because he can't smoke in the store. And uh, now it's just Bamboo left in there. And Bamboo just is, like, irritated and pissed off at this Asian dude for, like, basically no reason. And he's saying that it's not the same sandwich as the last guy. And the Asian dude's like, no, it's the same fucking sandwich, you know, all that kind of shit. And Bamboo, he starts getting racial with it. And he's like, you take your fucking fish head hands and you make my sandwich bigger too, all right? And the Asian guy's like, yo, fuck you. Get out of the store. Bamboo pulls out a gun. And then this is where it gets sad and brutal. There's a little girl in the store with her fucking mom. And she's got a little, a little buggy pushing a doll. And she makes a noise. Bamboo with the gun drawn thinks it's someone fucking with him. Spins around and fires and shoots a little girl. And it, then Bamboo and Daquan, they fucking run and they flee and they end up getting arrested. But that is one of the best variety store scenes that I can think of right now. It's, it's killer diller, man. I'm telling you, like the fact that like they kill like the kid and the way they do it and like Bamboo's face, like they just shoot it so well, like amazing scene. Another scene that could play well on its own. Next, we're going to take a look at a sci-fi robbery. So in Robocop, which is our next film. We have a killer scene where this asshole goes into this mom and pop bodega and thinks he's going to pull a fast one on them. And he, he kicks the fucking, kicks all the cans away from the safe. He knows where the safe is at. But the old lady is a smart broad and she presses the button to alert the police that the, a robbery is being, you know, perpetrated right now. Little does a scumbag know the cop that's going to show up is the fucking absolute worst cop you can think of next to like Harvey Keitel and Bad Lieutenant. You got Robocop. Robocop comes in, bends the guy's fucking barrel barrel of like his insanely ridiculous looking gun. I don't know shit about guns, but this gun has like the magazine coming out of the side. It's total fucking World War II shit. And uh, Robocop treats it like a fucking Slim Jim, basically. And then he just throws this dude, who's like a big dude, into the freezer. Destroys the store. Kind of like uh, Loaded Weapon, where Emilio Estevez 
destroys that store in the beginning of the movie and then he just like you're welcome basically so that's the vibe i get like it's it's a short scene but it's effective it's killer it has of course one of the best uh well-quoted lines of robocop i'd buy that for a dollar like that's such a fucking stupid thing but it's funny and i i even when you see it, you laugh, even though it's not its not that funny, but it's the people that are laughing at it, you get a kick out of it. So, Robocop, amazing robbery. Attempted robbery, I guess. Taking a look at a horror film now. We got a horror film robbery that happens in a variety store. And uh, it's not so much a robbery as it is a um, hostage situation. And that film is from dusk till dawn. So, the Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, uh, Robert Kurtzman, I believe is the guy's name who wrote the story. From KMB FX. Beautifully acted by uh, George Clooney, Quentin Tarantino, Juliette Lewis, Harvey Cattell, Selma Hayek, Danny Trejo's in there, Cheech, a slew of other like just memorable characters. Like the dude that works at the variety store himself is a character. I remember him from Hardball. He was uh, Keanu Reeves' buddy. And he was also an American gangster. But basically, the scene starts off with this cop showing up at the variety store, and everything's looking all hunky-dory, and he goes into the back, but he uh, mentions briefly that there's, like, this, these scumbags out there, and you hear it on the news and all that shit, that this crazy shit is happening. And uh, the cop goes to use the bathroom, and when the cop goes to use the bathroom, Quentin Tarantino and George Clooney, they come fucking whipping out with guns, and these broads under their arms, not in, like, a good way, they basically say, if you say anything, you're fucked. Tarantino being like a crazy fuck in this film says that he said something which ends in the cop being fucking murdered the store clerk being murdered the girls I guess they got away but uh the store gets wrecked totally fucked explodes and all like the whole nine kind of reminds you of like a cartoon where like the fucking you know a pencil falls off of a cliff and then it explodes at the end this scene is really good about tension like it's really a tense scene well done for sure even though there's no horror elements in that scene it's still a horror film but i, I had to throw this movie in because it is one of my favorite scenes that has a rob that has gunfire in a variety store moving on to one of the most classic of the hood films menace to society oh dog what a crazy motherfucker if you haven't seen this film film if you haven't seen the film menace to society do yourself a favor it's great it's great. It, it even has like a, a, an ongoing gag about a VHS tape. So definitely check that film out. But basically the film starts off with these two buddies going into a variety store, getting a couple 40s. And they're kind of being rushed out of the store, it, it would feel. And like even the woman's like, hurry up and buy and all that shit. And they, they're they like, what the fuck you kind of thing. And they go up and they go to pay. And uh, the clerk makes a comment about O-Dog's mother. He says he's he feels sorry for your mother. And O-Dog is just like... What you say about my mama? Kane is over there fucking pounding down his old English. And O-Dog just fucking blasts the guy. Kills his wife. Takes the cash. Takes the security tape. And they flee. And that's the start of the film. It's amazing. It's so fucking good. Menace to Society. One of the best hood films. Definitely check that out. Now the final film that I'm going to talk about right now. Is one of my nearest and dearest films to my heart. Because I watched this when I was extremely young. Fell in love with it. Uh, I, I've seen this movie before I knew who Tupac was, and that film is Juice. So, if you haven't seen Juice, once again, check that fucker out. It's about four friends who decide to do this robbery at a variety store. and The, the robbery goes very sour. Basically, it goes like this. The four buddies enter the variety store, and one of them basically says the guy's another... One of them basically calls out one of their names, which is a red flag, but it wasn't nearly enough to kill the guy. Tupac has just got the gun pointed, they've got the money, they've got their batteries, all that kind of shit, and Tupac just pulls the trigger. He fucking pulls the trigger on the guy at the store, and they flee. It's worth mentioning that they flee to another alley where Tupac and his fucking good buddy, Raheem, played by, uh, his good buddy Raheem, who's played by, uh, Kalel Kane, I believe his name is, he's a really good actor, they have an altercation in this alley that leads to Raheem being shot by Tupac, which is like the start of Tupac going totally fucking bad shit in that film. So, great scene, great variety store robbery, great ending with gunshed or gunfire and bloodshed. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta point out that like I don't condone this type of behavior in reality, but when it comes to cinema, I'm up for anything. So, 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for more and uh, subscribe and all that bullshit. Leave some comments. The question of this video is going to be this. What are you more excited for? Three from Hell or The Irishman? These are two movies that are currently not out. They've both been screened, but they are not out right now. So what are you more excited for? Personally, I'm more excited for Irishman because Scorsese, he's, he's fucking, he's on the list. You know what I mean? Taxi Driver. Like, it's... Oh, man, it's it's hard for me to pick between those two because Rob Zombie, I love Rob Zombie, I love his films. Uh, the the one, I think it was 31, I, I might have to rewatch that because I did not, wasn't a fan of that. Uh, initially wasn't the biggest fan of Lords of Salem, but it, the second time I watched it I was like, man, this is fucking nuts. Like, I think I watched it and I was like pissed off or tired or something. And that can definitely affect how you take in a film. But this three from hell, it just looks insane. Like I haven't seen the trailer, so I shouldn't say it looks insane. But the the idea of it blows my fucking mind because it's such such a oddity to me. Like how the fuck are they gonna continue the story? Like they 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 survived all that shit. And I might have mentioned this in a video earlier, but like you know they got shot to shit, and you know before that they had been like half burnt to death, fucking stapled all up, bleeding out, all that kind of shit. And I guess they lived, but. You know, from the screenshots that I've seen on, like, Instagram, once again, rest in peace, Sid Haig, hats off to him. Um, there's, like, screenshots of him in, like, an interrogation room or in a prison cell, it looks like. He's kind of, like, got this, like, funny, funny look on his face, but goddamn, I'm excited for that. I've not watched the trailer. I watched the trailer for Irishman. I don't know why the fuck I did that, but I did, and uh, I am excited, so I will say that. So, thanks for watching. Adios.